Hey, hey, welcome back to Feminine Success TV. I'm your host, Yaya Smith. And join me weekly as I share tips to help you find your feminine flow, elevate your thought life, organize your home life, deepen your fulfillment, and improve your relationships with step-by-step -step solutions to have sustainable success. I've helped thousands of women worldwide create total transformations. Now you can get the support you want to get your whole life. Welcome back to Feminine Success TV. Today I am answering a user question that I've actually gotten many times before. I've coached women through it in Feminine Success School. And that question is, I'm going to read it <laughs> just so that I don't mess it up. Yeah, yeah. How do you respond gracefully when your femininity is misinterpreted or challenged? So if I were answering this question inside of my community, I will first give you what I would say there. And that would be, give me an example. When I'm answering these kinds of questions, I like to make sure that I have context so that I answer it properly. So because I don't have context for this question, I will answer it in a general way that can support anyone who may be feeling like you are trying to shift into your femininity or you have tried before and it was misunderstood, it was misinterpreted, um, folks either thought you were weak or they tried to play with you or they maybe um, have had a relationship with you prior to the shift that you're making and they don't get what this new thing is that you're doing. Friendship, romantic relationship, either way. So I'll talk about what should happen in that regard. How do you respond gracefully? How do you remain graceful when maybe you're getting some negativity or maybe you're getting some backlash or maybe you're just getting someone who does not get what it is that you're doing? So the first thing that I'll say is make sure that what you're actually trying to say or what you're actually trying to express, because the feminine is expressive, what you're actually trying to express is not lost in translation. So many times what you're trying to say or what you're trying to show can be lost in translation. So you want to make sure that what you're saying is not being lost in translation and that that person isn't responding to what they think you're saying. You want to make sure that you're communicating clearly, whether you're communicating needs or you're communicating expectations or maybe you're communicating a vulnerability. When you're saying femininity, I'm not sure what aspect you're really asking about here, but there are many different aspects that can be misinterpreted, especially because we live in a society that does not honor the feminine much at all. And much of what we're getting now about honoring the feminine is coming really from a masculine perspective or from a very shadow feminine perspective. And so because I'm assuming that that's not where you are, being that you want to respond with grace, I say make sure that what you're actually saying is not being lost in translation. Make sure that what you're expressing is what you want to be expressing. There are many times, for me especially, I say all the time that I, <laughs> I had an attitude before I met my husband. And or not before I met him, but before we started our courtship process, before we got married, I had an attitude and he was like, you know what? I love you, but I cannot deal with attitude. What was really going on was that I was not properly expressing my needs to get the response that I was looking for. I thought that I was. Granted, I thought that I was saying what needed to be said in the way that it needed to be said. I tried to change my tone. I tried to, I tried to change um, the cadence of how I was speaking and it simply was not coming across. So I had to realize that what I thought I was expressing was not coming out the way that I thought it was and correct that. 
So that's the first thing. Make sure that what you're saying or what you are trying to express is not being lost in translation. The second uh, tip that I'll give here is to be graceful with yourself. Many times when we have a hard time responding to others with grace, being understanding, you find yourself always bothered by what others are saying or doing, um, the mistakes that they're making really rattle you and ruffle your feathers. Um, and this is no judgment. It just happens. And I know, you know, you lack patience, you lack grace. Um, what's really happening, and I know because this was true for me, is that we are not being graceful with ourselves. The way that you respond to other people is the way that you respond to yourself. Think about it. When you make a mistake, are you overly critical of yourself? When you um, say that you're going to do something and you don't, you don't keep the promise to yourself. Are you overly self-deprecating? Are you coming down on yourself and yelling at yourself and frustrated? And sometimes we even, without recognizing it, give ourselves the silent treatment. How are you treating you when you make mistakes, when something is difficult and you don't understand it, when you don't show up in the way that you say you will, um, when you respond to something in a way that you really didn't mean to or want to, and you say, oh, you know, I'm going to be better next time. And the next time comes and you do what you did last time. How do you respond to yourself? Do you respond to yourself in a graceful way? Because if you don't respond to yourself in a graceful way, then when someone else makes a mistake, misinterprets, misunderstands, your response to them will not be graceful either. Now, this doesn't mean that you're cussing yourself out or anything like that, or even that you're doing that to other people. But you want to make sure that your response to yourself is what you would want your response to be to someone else. Being graceful is not a switch. Just like being feminine is not a switch. It's not something you turn on and turn off. It's something that you practice on a consistent basis so that it becomes second nature to you. Once you get to a, a level of relationship within yourself, when you know that you're talking to the God in you, when you are responding in, in different ways and you're, you're not being as kind to yourself as you need to be, and you start to, Im to improve that relationship, then your standard, set up a standard, your standard response will be the graceful response. Okay, so you want to start setting that standard of grace within yourself. The third piece of this is to remember that grace does not mean ignoring. I think, and this is just what I think, I think that a lot of times when we say, I am not as graceful when I'm responding to someone, I am not as kind or um, whatever else comes up. What we're really feeling many times, not all the time, many times, sometimes you know you weren't being graceful, but sometimes it's that their feelings were hurt because you held them accountable or you're in their mind saying, oh my God, they must not like me now. What do they think about me now that I've said that? And because the person may feel convicted by what you say, or how you express, you may be judging it as not graceful. But sometimes grace convicts you. Sometimes grace reminds you that what you're doing is stepping, is crossing or violating someone's boundary. Sometimes God's grace. Yes, he'll save us, but he'll remind us that we cross that boundary so that we never cross it again. So you want to remember that grace is not ignoring a problem. Grace is not ignoring a misunderstanding. Grace is not acting like it never even happened. Grace is not pretending like it's all good. That becomes resentment. We can talk about that if you, we can talk about it if you want to talk about it. Okay. That becomes resentment. So you want to make sure that you're remembering that grace is not you ignoring. So okay. quick recap. The question was, how do you respond gracefully when your femininity is misinterpreted or challenged? The first thing I shared is to make sure that what you're trying to express is not lost in translation, that you're not losing the person 
in your expression because you're not quite sure how to say what you need in the way that gets you the results that you're looking for. The second is to be sure that you're being graceful with yourself. Remember, how you respond to yourself is how you respond to others. So you want to set grace as your standard response to yourself so that it then becomes your standard when you're speaking to others. The third thing is you have to know grace is not about ignoring a problem or acting like what happened didn't happen. You can hold someone accountable gracefully. You can make sure that folks know not to play with you gracefully. You can make sure that you're taken seriously gracefully. You want to make sure that what you're saying and how you're saying it is actually getting you the results that you want, which is better relationships, deeper connections, more meaningful work, more purposeful work, a more peaceful household, shall I say? Because listen, I know all the grace in the world will not stop a toddler from tearing things up. <laughs> and a deeper, more fulfilling relationship with yourself. So with that, I'm going to say peace. If you have any questions, topics, send them to me. I would love to cover them. Make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with a woman you know who needs it. Thank you.